This is exciting because we haven't covered lower body on any of our other tutorials and YouTube video and content we've done before. And that's because it takes a little bit more and requires more attention to some of the finer details of what's going on lower down there. So the first thing we're gonna do is sort out our squat mechanics and our basic squat movement. Patterns. That stems from making sure that we've got a nice, stable, clean squat pattern so we're moving well and then we've got these strong foundations from which we can then go and get into some exciting lower body training for calisthenics. Let's get started. We're going to start with an overview of the squat mechanics so you know exactly what you're aiming to do. It'd be really effective if you can do this in front of a mirror or film yourself so you can understand where you are in space and where the potential areas that you need to focus are, are on. So Jacko is going to start off with a feet shoulder width apart feet facing forward. We always set up like this for our squatting because it, rela it relates very well to what our functional pattern is gonna be. If we're gonna run or for just day-to-day -day life and function and performance, we wanna be making sure that our feet facing forwards and our progressions in calisthenics towards things like pistol squats aren't going to be done with the feet out. Uh, if you wanna go and back squat 150 kilos, maybe that's more beneficial, but for us, we're gonna work toes in line. So if he starts off in this position, then Jacko is going to come through. He's going to just put his hands out in front of him. As he squats down from the front, the thing that we're looking at is that his knees stay in line with the toes. We don't want to see those start to collapse through. So give us another rep, Jacko. So if he comes down, the knees start to come together. We want to try and keep those out over the toes and we'll do some work on the glutes and some range of movement in the hip flexors and the adductors to start to help that a little bit as well. The other thing that we want to be mindful of is do those toes move? We talked about starting them off facing forwards. If we start to see them screw, and that's often combined with this uh, inward rotation of the knees, we want to try and reset each time. The reason that's happening is because the body is taking the path of least resistance and we're running into some restrictions and some tightness along the way or some lack of control, which is causing the body to have to rotate and move joints, the knee and the ankle and the hips into different positions to try and find this end shape of the squat. So just to recap, Jacko is going to come back up. You can see he's keeping his chest up. We'll talk about that more in a second, but the knees stay over toes feet facing forwards. If we're finding that we can't do that, then we need to spend a bit of time on our mobility. So we're gonna have a look at the same movement, our squat pattern now from the side, so you can see a slightly different angle and a couple more things that you need to be aware of. So now the job is that we're gonna focus on the hip and our torso position. So I'm gonna get Jacko to show us a great rep. So when he sits into this position, we're looking to keep this spine in a neutral shape. You can see he achieves a range of movement just past 90 degrees, but we're not losing control of the back and arching through. So he's having to work really hard with that core to maintain the ribs on top of the pelvis like he's going to take a punch to keep that straight. It shows an arch back jacko. So if he drops in, we don't want to see this back extend into this big banana position. We're looking to try and keep it nice and tight. We can do one more good one. As he drops in, holds tight that midsection, you can see he maintains a nice position. The second thing we want to look at from this shape is whether what this torso is doing. Now in a great rep, what happens is when jacko comes down, the torso angle here, this line is matching the same line as we have from the, um, from the shin here. So these two lines should be parallel. If he comes back up and he shows us what happens when the chest collapses forwards, we can now see that our tibia and torso ratio, tibia here and our torso here have come together. We've lost control, so this is not looking like a great squat position. Again, if we have issues here, particularly we're thinking about how much calf range of movement we have or dorsiflexion we have. So how far can we get this shin forward into a nice position at the ankle? And if we're seeing this back arch, it's typically going to be related to the hips and some tension in our hip flexors and our quads, which are starting to pull the pelvis into an anterior tilted position. Those things are not great for controlling the squat, so we need to address them through some mobility work. And we're gonna cover all that. And the next first thing we're gonna do in this classroom is sort out our squat mechanics and our basic squat movement patterns.